Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about general linear algebra in abstract vector spaces. But of course, all these things are also helpful if you just want to calculate in Rn. This holds especially for the topic in today's part 14, which will be about the orthogonal projection onto a line. The only thing we need for doing this is an inner product in our vector space. However, before we go into the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support me on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And as you might already know, as a supporter, you can download PDF versions and quizzes with the link in the description. Okay, then let's immediately start with the same picture we had in the last video. However, now maybe we give another interpretation or motivation just imagine you are on a rowboat on a river. And the direction R is the direction you want to go. But the water in the river could flow into a different direction. So let's say the water flow is given by a vector x. So this means that only a part of the whole water flow can help you to go into the direction R. And in order to get this net flow we want, we have to split the vector x into two parts. So as mentioned in the last video, we want to do that with a right angle here. And then we get two vectors we can call n and p. And the important vector p lies on the line here and gives us the net flow of the water. So you could say this is the part of x that pushes you in the correct direction. However, you might also already guess that we have a lot of applications for such a decomposition with a right angle. And indeed, we will talk about these later on. Therefore, you should keep in mind that this picture here is a visualization that holds for any general vector space we can choose. The only two things we need here is an inner product in the vector space and a subspace u. And today, we start the discussion with a one-dimensional subspace. Very well, then let's put everything into a formal definition. So what we need here is an f vector space v and an inner product defined on v times v. So please don't forget, this already means that f is either the real numbers or the complex numbers. And if it helps you, think of v as rn together with the standard inner product. However, still the whole definition here is very general. Now, in this vector space, we consider a subspace u. However, it should be a one-dimensional one, which means we can write it as a span as before. So we can just fix a direction r, which means it should not be given by the zero vector. So in this case, the vector r determines the whole subspace u. Okay, and now for any vector x in v, we can write down such a decomposition. Or in order to be more careful, we could say if we have such a decomposition, then the two vectors p and n get some special names. However, first it's important to write down the properties of p and n. So first, p should be an element in our one-dimensional subspace u. And second, the vector n should be orthogonal to the subspace u, which means n should be perpendicular to r. So this is exactly the picture and you might already see with both properties here we might get a uniqueness for this decomposition. But before we do that let's first write down the important names for the two vectors. So first p is called the orthogonal projection of x onto u. So of course orthogonal projection here only makes sense if we mention the subspace. And on the other hand, n is called the normal component of x. And also here we would usually say with respect to the subspace u. Now these two names are very important, so please remember them for the future. Okay, so I mentioned it before and as you can see, these names only make sense if we have a uniqueness in this decomposition. Otherwise, it would be strange to speak of the orthogonal projection if we had more than one. Therefore, the first thing we should do now is to prove the uniqueness. 
Indeed, the picture should already tell us that we cannot change the vectors here without changing one of the properties. But now let's prove it mathematically, which means we assume that we have two decompositions for x. And for the second one, we just use a tilde on p and n. Hence, please don't forget, we still have the two properties of p tilde and n tilde as well. Which means p tilde is in u and n tilde is in the orthogonal complement of u. So please recall the definition. The orthogonal complement of u has all the vectors from v that are orthogonal to r. Therefore, now we can check if n tilde and n are actually different. And we can examine that by putting x is equal to x. Or more precisely, what we want is that p plus n is equal to p tilde plus n tilde. And now in the next step, we can put the colors together. So let's write p minus p tilde is equal to n tilde minus n. And at this point, you should recognize that we have two different subspaces on left and right. So p minus p tilde is definitely an element in u. p and p tilde are in u, and since u is a subspace, we cannot leave this subspace by linear combinations. And the same on the right hand side with u perp, you can just check that n tilde minus n is still orthogonal to r. This simply holds because of the linear property of the inner product. Hence, our result here is that the new vector we form here lies in the intersection of u with u orthogonal complement. And indeed, this intersection only contains the zero vector. If we want to prove that, we can simply use the orthogonality definition. It states that the inner product p minus p tilde with n tilde minus n has to vanish. This is orthogonal because we know that n tilde minus n lies in the orthogonal complement. However, since we have the equality as well, we get two more equations here. On the one hand, we can just substitute the second argument with p minus p tilde. And on the other hand, we can substitute the first argument with n tilde minus n. And now we see both things are equal to zero and we can use the properties of the inner product. And essentially we just need the first property of the inner product, which states that it is positive definite. It implies if we put the same vector left and right in the inner product and we get out zero, then this vector has to be the zero vector. So we get p minus p tilde is equal to the zero vector and n tilde minus n. And hence, the decomposition was the same all along. So you see, this shows the uniqueness we wanted. Okay, so very good. And now you already know, the next part we want to show is the existence. And for this we don't need crazy ideas, we can just try calculating this orthogonal projection. So let's start by using the fact that p lies in our subspace u. So it lies in the span of r and by considering the picture, we know it's a multiple of this vector r. So p can be written as lambda times r. Therefore, the question is, what is the scalar lambda from the field f? And now to get this, to get a formula for lambda, we should start with the two ingredients we have from the beginning. Namely, we have the vector x given and the vector r. And if we recall our boat on the water picture, we know that the angle between r and x is important. In other words, calculating the inner product makes sense for us. Moreover, the starting point makes sense because we have our decomposition for x and we can put in our lambda there. Or more precisely, x is given as p plus n and therefore given as lambda times r plus n. And now the only thing we have is calculating with an inner product. And obviously we can just use the linearity in the second argument. This means first we can pull out the addition. So we have two inner products then. And in the second step we can pull out the scalar. Hence the result is this. And this is quite nice because we immediately see that the second term here vanishes. 
by the orthogonality, the inner product is zero. And in addition, you can see we have our lambda factor. Since r is not the zero vector, we can divide by this inner product. It's not zero. And in conclusion, our lambda is given by this fraction. So the logic tells us here, if we have such a decomposition for x, then lambda has to be of this form. And now we can just put the lambda in and see that this lambda defines such a decomposition for x. So this brings us exactly to the existence of the orthogonal projection. So we can say p is given by this lambda factor times the vector r and n is simply given by x minus this p. So in summary, x is given as p plus n and n is orthogonal to r. So this is simply a calculation you can do again and then the whole existence is done. Okay, so now you know how to do an orthogonal projection onto a one-dimensional subspace. And with the next videos we can look at some examples and we can also extend it to a higher dimensional subspace. Orthogonal projections are always important and therefore this generalization will be useful as well. So I wish you a nice day and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.